two weeks in and we have a new paddling partner, 30-year-old marine biologist Dr. Melita Pajarda, who works with the Marine Institute of Oceanography in Split. Uh, we're buying fish from the local fishermen, and um, John is just coming up and to check up. He just got some from the trap pulled up, and it's just still alive, fresh fish, so we want to have a normal dinner tonight. Melita will paddle with us to the big islands of Brach and Havar and serve as a guide to the marine life in what appears to be a very pristine Adriatic. How is the health of the sea? It's, it's quite good? The Adriatic is still one of the pristine areas in Mediterranean, so it's pretty clean. Yeah. The problems are mostly of local characters. So near the big cities? Near the big cities or like in a smaller harbor, very localized. The irony is the sea here is both fish rich and at risk of being overfished. International waters sit just two miles off the coast, and each night we see long lines of trawlers fishing mostly for sardines, swordfish, and tuna. Officially, there are 410 species of fish in the clear waters, but that number is dwindling. The World Wildlife Federation believes it is urgent to establish a network of marine protected areas, in part because a healthy marine life is also good for tourism. It has proposed banning all fishing in waters up to 150 feet throughout the Mediterranean. On a brisk, gray, windy morning, we paddle up to the 70-foot Nermirna, a half mile off Brach, where the crew is steadily shoveling 15 tons of Norwegian herring into an enclosed net. Inside swim 93 quarter-ton, previously wild tuna. There was a selvatic tuna, you know, wild tunas? Yes. Who just uh, came around this cage. And how big were they when you caught them? We, we got them uh, two months ago. Ah, okay. We got them directly here two months ago. Ah, okay. So and they were already big? They were uh, around this uh, cage ah, okay. two months ago. And in one particular moment, uh, we opened cage and, and uh, put some sardina inside. They went in? They just... Na all 93? Yes, all 93. All are soon destined for a Japanese processing boat working its way along the coasts of Portugal, Spain, Italy, and Croatia, buying up tuna for sushi. There are seven pens nearby, each filled with tuna of varying sizes. This farm is owned by a company called Sardina, which sells 6,000 tons of tuna a year directly to Japan. There are concerns about this form of fish farming. According to the World Wildlife Federation, Tuna farming puts increased pressure on wild tuna stocks, which are already overfished. Unlike aquaculture, where fish are bred and reared in captivity, tuna farming uses fish captured in the wild. Most tuna caught in Croatia are juveniles, not yet able to reproduce and renew wild stocks. One sign of the times, in a recent public referendum, a tuna farm was stopped off the island of Vis. 88% of voters voted yes. no, agreeing that tuna farms would negatively impact tourism. Miro Kusic owns Sardina. He understands these concerns, though argues there is plenty of room along the Adriatic coastline for fish farms. Five tuna fish farmers in Croatia. But all around the world, it's not more than 25. So it's, a, it's a hard business. Since they need live fish to feed the tuna, there must be a balance. Kusic says, if or when we reach a point where more than half the fish being sold out of Croatia are coming from farms, that will not be good. And that could happen in the next five to 10 years.